The following lesson is linked to learning outcome four, language, and it addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to develop critical language awareness. We live in a world where we are surrounded by adverts. As more ways of communicating are developed, advertisers have more opportunities to send out more messages using more mediums. Young people are often the ones who are most comfortable with using mediums such as the internet, cell phones and other electronic communication devices. But because of this, they are being targeted by more and more adverts. Hi, I'm McFarlane Muleli. In the final lesson in our series about the world of advertising, we are going to look at new media, the people who use it, and its advantages and drawbacks. Here are the outcomes for this lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain what new media is and how advertisers use it, identify the target audience for new media, state some advantages and disadvantages of using new media, for advertising. In a previous lesson, we learned that there are many mediums for sending adverts. People can be exposed to adverts through television, magazines, email messages, billboards, the radio, SMS messages on their cell phones, and even posters. Some of these mediums, such as print and television, have been used by advertisers for a long time. But other ways of sending adverts, such as SMSs and emails, are fairly new. Devices that give us new ways of sending messages are known as new media. We asked Ludi Kukamur, the principal of AAA School of Advertising, what new media is and how it differs from other media. So to summarize your above-the-line media is television, radio, print and out of home. Then we have new media, electronic media. We have uh, media aimed at your, uh, a category of youngsters which we call the, uh, the screen ages. And those would be your school kids, uh, your young adults, uh, people who use extensive use of cell phones and computers to send SMSs, messages to each other, emails, uh, instant messaging, all of those things. Did you notice that Ludi described a group of people as screen ages? What do you think this term means? The word screenager is made up of two words, screen and teenager. Although screenagers isn't a formal English word, this term is used by people in the advertising industry to refer to a target market of young people who spend a lot of time using electronic devices that have screens like cell phones, computer games, Blackberries and iPods. Do you think you fit into the screenager target market or do you know any screenagers? Use this checklist to decide. Screenagers are young, they look at screens a lot and use new media devices easily. Screenagers like to communicate with others using these devices and they download music and other things with these devices. Okay. Now that we know what new media is and the target audience most likely to be sent messages using new media, here are two questions to discuss. In what ways does advertising using new media differ from advertising using other media? And what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of using new media to advertise? Let's hear how our advertising expert, Ludi Kukamur, explained the differences between advertising using new media compared to other media. So I think the new technology is enabling us in advertising now to think in terms of other types of media and other forms of messages where the classical media, your television, your radio is aimed at masses of people, large amounts of people and you almost shoot like uh, with a shotgun. So you have one message and you blast it out and you hope that people will, will get your message. With SMS and email, you can direct it at an individual. It is one-to-one -one communication. 
Advertising using new media, such as SMS or email, is effective because you can reach individuals with your message rather than just large groups. It is also much cheaper for companies to advertise using SMSs or emails than, say, putting an advert on TV or in a magazine. But how effective are adverts using new media? Do people like being sent these adverts? We spoke to some screenagers to find out. I cannot stand it when I get advert SMSs. I mean, I hear my phone going beep, 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 and I think, wow, an SMS from a friend, only to find that it's an ad. I've stopped writing down my email address and cell phone number on entry forms because I always end up getting junk mail. I don't mind getting email ads when they're from places that I buy from. They let me know when there's a special or if a new product has arrived. It drives me crazy when I download my mail and half of them are spam or junk mail. Firstly, because it wastes my time sifting through all the emails. And secondly, because it wastes my money because I need to stay connected for longer. I don't mind getting adverts on my cell phone. I mean, it doesn't cost me anything to receive an SMS. And sometimes the adverts let me know of something that might be interesting in a later stage. Advertisers like sending SMS and email because they are cheap to send and they can be sent to a selected target market. But as we've seen, not everyone likes receiving these messages. Have you ever heard of spam? Spam is an email advert which a person receives that they did not ask for. Basically, spam is electronic junk mail. However, unlike print junk mail, which costs a lot of money to print and distribute, spam mail is cheap to create and send out, which means that lots and lots of it is sent to as many addresses as possible, not just people who are in a specific target market. Just how much is sent? Well, to give you an idea, almost 70% of all email received on the internet is spam, and some experts say that it's increasing by 1,000% a year. Why do you think spam is a problem for internet users? Spam is a problem for individuals and businesses. It clogs up the bandwidth that should be used to send legitimate emails and it wastes people's time to go through their messages and work out which ones are junk. So, are all email adverts spam? No, not all email adverts are spam. Some adverts are sent electronically by responsible companies. For example, a bookshop that I visit lets me know that their sale is coming up. I'm glad to get the message. And I like finding out which products another shop has on its monthly specials. Adverts like these use new media well. These adverts are sent to people who want to receive them, and the people who receive them are likely to respond to them. These responsible advertisers are also happy to remove people's addresses from their mailing lists if people no longer wish to receive their adverts. On the other hand, adverts about stock prices, porn sites and get-rich-quick schemes are annoying examples of spam. Spam is sent to as many people as possible because it is so cheap to send that even if only a fraction of people respond, it was worth sending. So, how can we prevent ourselves from being targeted by unwanted spam? To avoid getting sent lots of electronic junk mail, you may want to try the following tips. Don't give out your email address except to friends or family. Don't respond to spam, as this lets the spammers know your address is real and they will send you even more. Use a service provider that uses anti-spamming software. Keep your antivirus software up to date and change your email address if necessary. Of course, chances are you'll still get spam, but I guess that is part of being a screenager. We just have to hope that eventually spammers will realize that it is a waste of time sending messages to people who aren't interested in their products. We've almost reached the end of our series on the world of advertising. Let's recap what we've learned. We've learned that mediums are ways of sending messages, that the target market is the group of people that an advert is aimed at, that most adverts follow the ADA principle of attracting attention, getting interest, creating desire and inspiring action. We've also analyzed some examples of adverts and public service announcements to see how they use emotion, humor and irony to spread their message. But before you go, here's a task.
write an SMS advert for a product that you would buy. Try to incorporate all of the ADA principles, but remember that you have limited space to get your message across. Well, that's all for our series on the world of advertising. Throughout life, you're going to be exposed to adverts, but I hope that this series has got you thinking about how adverts work so that you're in a better position to decide whether to let them influence you. I'm McFarlane Muleli. See you next time.